All right, so today I'm going to make a video answering a viewer question. Um, and there it goes. It's about MIG welding. Uh, somebody asked, how do you tell if your MIG welder is in spray transfer? Uh, or if you're running spray transfer on your MIG welder, how do you tell the difference between that and short circuiting? And I told the guy, you know, the main way I tell is by sound. Uh, so I'm going to... I'm going to run a couple different welds here with some different settings. Uh, I'm going to be running pretty much across my table here. Uh, that way you guys can see the welder settings that I have. That way I won't be blocking the view. Um, so I'm going to get set up here. So I'll see if the, the camera can see that. Um, yeah, so I'm going to be welding, uh, 2F, uh, joint right there. Uh, the bottom plate is somewhere around like half inch or thicker. And the channel iron is like three sixteenths inches thick. Um, so I'm going to run short circuit on that first. Um, short circuit is... For thinner stuff, it's not going to penetrate too well on the uh, on the thicker plate. If I set it right, it'll penetrate into the into the uh, channel iron, but it won't penetrate that well into the thicker piece of steel. So I got my welder set at 240 inches a minute, and it's starting out with roughly 18.8 .8 volts. Uh, on this machine, it will fluctuate volts a little bit. Uh, depending on how how my torch angle is there and everything is uh, So yeah, let's get set up here And we'll run a quick quick little weld There's a lot of wood in this, in this big gun right now for some reason can't imagine the uh, walnut that I was cutting had anything to do with that. Alright, so 240 inches a minute wire feed and 18.8 uh, .8 volts. Let's do this. Reach across the table. Alright, so you could hear it is like, I guess people describe that as like a bacon frying sound. I, I weld a lot more than I fry bacon, so it doesn't sound like bacon frying to me. Um, I'll get the metal cleaned up here and bring it in. So that, that's what we had there. Um, yeah, it just looks like a normal MIG weld. I'm pretty sure if I try, I can get this to break real easy. <clears throat> Yeah, by hand, it just broke. Yeah. So, now I'll set this up a little bit differently here. Um, same joint configuration, but instead of uh, running short circuit, I'm going to turn this up uh, probably about like 375 on the wire. And then I'm just running normal 7525. So I'm going to turn this. I'm going to 
or turn it up to about 32 volts and just see what happens. This machine will fluctuate down if it cannot sustain that 32 volts. Um, most machines won't do that, so yeah, we'll see what happens here. And then I'm also going to hold a longer, uh, like a longer arc, arc length. So if you could hear that, that was a lot quieter uh, than, than we previously established. Uh, There's a little bit more spatter involved, but uh, yeah, it, it was definitely a lot different. Um, it was almost silent, like this eerie silence. And I'll show you what that looks like. So there, as you can see, you know, it's not as humped up as the short circuit weld. Um, there was a lot more spatter involved in that one. Um, the settings were not really correct for, uh, you know, that weld. Uh, you know, the wire feed to voltage ratio is not really correct. That's why there was a lot of spatter in that one. And then, uh, it took a lot more effort to break, to break that. And it's actually still holding there a little bit. It didn't fully break. That short circuit weld broke almost immediately. This one is still holding. Now, just finally it broke. Um, so that was, that was either spray transfer or globular. Uh, a lot of people say you need like a 90-10 gas to run spray transfer. Uh, so I'm gonna set that up here and we can see how that runs. All right, so now I got the 90-10 hooked up to the MIG welder. I'm gonna give that a shot at the same settings. Uh, 375 and 31.9 is what, what it held at. Could hear but that was a lot better um, there wasn't as much nearly as much spatter um, and then yeah that was like a weird eerie silence sort of deal um, I mean it makes noise but it's not like that short circuit uh, sound there's this weird uh, I don't know what you want to call that like a film that came off of that like a soot or something. And then this is what we got. Um, that looks a lot better. Um, and it, that was just some random settings. I didn't have that really set too correctly either. Um, yeah, it looks a lot better. And we'll see how well this holds. Alright, so 
so that's still holding right there. Still holding. It's actually still holding together. Just barely, but it is. So that's not like a tutorial on how to run spray transfer. Uh, that's just kind of how you tell the difference is by that sound. Um, on our Lower my voltage here a little bit. Uh, let's go with 27 volts. See what works here. Uh, clean wire feed. Alright, so I don't know if you could hear that. It started out in spray transfer and then it was like it was short circuiting a little bit. Um, it, it wasn't really a true spray short circuit uh, transfer though. Um, it, it welded a lot better. I'm going to drop my wire feed to 345 and see what happens here. Alright, that actually ran really, really nicely, I think. Uh, get cleaned up here. I got some porosity there at the end. Yeah. I also didn't even clean this here real stuff. There's that. Um, then I will is it, look. Look at, uh, I'll let you look at the welds here. Uh, that first one there on your left, uh, that one is from uh, when I had the higher wire feed. And the one on the right is the lower wire feed. Probably could have turned the wire feed up just a little. I uh, made it a lot better, but. Yeah, somewhere around 375 and 28 volts is what what works, I think, best for this. Um, for this material. And, uh, yeah, as you can tell, that was a lot quicker than running a short circuit. Uh, all the way across that. I'll see how well this this holds up. I welded a lot more now, so it's not gonna break that easy. That's actually really uh, really hold in there. Um, I may not be able to break it with just an adjustable wrench. <sighs> no. So I could not break that apart. Um, it held pretty well.
So again, not a tutorial on how to spray transfer, just how to tell that you are in spray transfer. It runs a lot better with 90-10 gas. As you can tell, I got a lot of um, a lot of a lot of spatter with 7525. So yeah. That's a quick intro to spray transfer. For those of you that want to talk talk about how bad my welds were, um, I did some more experimenting after I shut the camera off. Uh, we're at 360 inches a minute wire feed, and the welder wants to hold at 28 point some volts. Um, Yeah, I got a lot better looking welds after I shut the camera off and played around with the settings a little bit more. Um, yeah. So I can actually weld when I want to. Um, then I'll flip it over. It's kind of hot. I'll use this to flip it over. There we go. I welded that part of it too in spray transfer. Uh, this is actually the last weld I did. So the, weld, the settings you see on the welder are from this. It actually came out pretty good. Um, this plate wasn't, or this wasn't cut straight. So I mean, I had to deal with it doing that. So yeah, I can actually weld when I want to. And yeah, spray transfer uh, is, you know, it, it works a lot better and holds a lot better than short circuit.